The Buddha once said, no one outside ourselves can rule us inwardly. We, once we know this, we become free. Today, I'm going to be talking about liberation with my special guest, Rachel Elnu. Rachel's a change maker, visionary, and has so many strings to her bow that I'm going to let her introduce herself. Welcome to New Earth Podcast, Rachel. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Sarah. Uh, just to say my name these days is actually Rachel Elnor Love. Uh, so um, I've kind of added that word um, and for reasons which maybe we'll go into later. But um, yeah, so I've had quite an interesting journey from a very kind of corporate background in accountancy and then business and winning awards for my first business, Red Letter Days and getting on Dragon's Den. Uh, but that kind of led me on a whole journey of discovery when I, when I, people started asking me to mentor them and I started becoming a bit more of a coach and a mentor and really opening to, first of all, I started to open to sort of NLP themes and trying to get in, interested in mindset and then realized it was much more than that, that it was about energy and law of attraction. And then I got very interested in shamanism and I've been to Peru on four spiritual pilgrimages, started working a lot with uh, the master plant teachers, the medicines, and uh, I've also done a four year training in trauma healing. So I've had a, quite an interesting journey and I'm kind of now sort of bringing that full circle because I've uh, been quite a, an outspoken critic of what's been unfolding over the past few years and it's inspired me to go into politics. Uh, and uh, I've also written a book, Liberation, which we might touch on, which is uh, uh, because that, that name, Rachel Elnor Love, the love really stands for the values of liberation, opportunity, vitality and empowerment. And that, that's what I'm very much about, like as a mentor, as a coach in my life as, and as a mother, really wanting to help to liberate people, to uh, create that that kind of mindset and energy field of opportunity, uh, really living vit in a, vi a strong vitality and also empowering people as well. So um, that's me in a nutshell, really, but there's lots to go into detail on there. There's lots to go into detail. And it was very interesting right before this podcast. I always, I, I work with Aura Soma and I always pick commanders and I picked, um, Olive Green, which is feminine empowerment, then Lady Nada, which is love. So I knew that today was going to be about uh, love and empowerment. I mean, so it, that was really beautiful. So is that green and pink then? Olive Green and pink. Olive Green is feminine power, um, but then I, I I chose the Lady Nada, which is the energy of love. It's it's the Mary Magdalene energy as well. Is, is that so. pink? Is what I'm saying. The, yes yes yeah it's pink yeah because so, that, yeah. that's interesting because th th this is my election leaflets you'll see that it's green and pink oh how wonderful <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're tuned in we're, we're, we're tuned Good. in so um empowerment for me it's always the inner work you know it's always about that mm. self-empowerment that that kind of clearing blocks inwardly what yeah. has your journey of self-empowerment been gosh well yeah i mean as you say um you know the th the thing about this life this energy it is in constant flow and i absolutely believe that this is a benevolent universe that is uh infinite intelligence and it's just waiting for our instructions but one of our biggest challenges is that we block that flow and so a big part of um, uh, my work as a mentor um, and also with myself is, is the shadow work is, you know, like what's blocking, what's blocking the flow? What are, what are my limiting beliefs? Where am I stopping that magic from manifesting? So I think that is really, it's really interesting work. Sorry, I've got my dog Kobe here, who's um, pestering, wanting a bit of attention. He's so if you can... the action. Yeah, if you if you um, if you can hear some snort snuffling in the background, that's what it is. But yeah, so I'm very fascinated by shadow work. And as I said, I've worked with a lot with the master plant teachers, which are incredible medicines at uh, 
journeying and seeing what we don't want to look at because this is the thing so anything we don't want to look at we project out there and yeah. so it's starting to get very interested in what's manifesting on the screen of our life and uh really you know really tuning in to what we're manifesting what we're co-creating yeah yeah, I mean, it's that inner outer relationship. And unfortunately, in our world, there's been a lot of fear programming. And we don't necessarily even know it's there, because often it's come from very early, early years in childhood, the first seven years. So it's how can we begin to break those cycles and step into becoming the manifester, the creator of our world? Yeah, well, here I am going to uh, talk a bit about the book because my the book Liberation has got two co covers. Uh, you can read it from both ends. So, so this side is really about how to manifest that life of amazing abundance and flow. But the other side of it is how to transcend fear and struggle and scarcity and pain because exactly what you're talking about, the false matrix, there... We, this um, 3D time-space reality has been locked down by this false matrix, by um, uh, the powers that be to create command and control over the people. And it's fabricated through fear. And so um, collapsing that false matrix, collapsing the fear and moving from that contraction of fear into that expansion of joy and optimism and love is really the name of the game. So the starting point for that for me, having learned this through trauma healing, is somatic experiencing, because experiencing, we're trained to work it all out in our head. But when we drop into our body and just drop into that stillness and fully feeling like, okay, what am I feeling? Where is the contraction? Where is it in my body? And um, because it's those contractions which are blocking the flow. And usually we move from that expansion into contraction when there's an external trigger. So as Dr. Gabor Mate says, get very interested in um, get very interested in your triggers, but take your energy off the trigger because it's the smallest part of the gun. Take trace it back to the unexploded bomb that it's attached to, and that unexploded bomb is typically. Uh, unresolved childhood trauma so all those times in our life when we've been wounded we've we haven't been able to fight or fly and we've frozen and so fully feeling is fully healing so if we can bring that out of sub the subconscious into conscious awareness and fully feel it that is the starting point for for a loosening and um uh dissolving that block to flow yeah so would you recommend for people if for example they have a trigger that sets them into an emotion either anger or fear to really explore the feeling there how how would you um suggest people follow that back yeah so so the thing about external triggers is uh things that really we have a strong reaction to literally there's like milliseconds before you go into fight flight or freeze and so holding the space and uh, of that ability to just slow down and not react now sometimes it's impossible to do that and you just you know you might, might fall into a very strong reaction but then after that's blown through you can always then go back and sit with that. Okay, what came up for me? What was I feeling? What was the, and where have I, this is the key thing, where have I felt that before in my life? Where, because these things replicate and they repeat over yes. and over until we collapse them. And then once we've healed them, they don't need to keep showing up anymore. So that to me is the holy grail is to, it. and, and a lot of this is about slowing down, building, lots of time in your day when you can just contemplate whether that's walking in nature or in meditation just sitting quietly or just doing that process of just tuning in to your body what's going on on in my body this somatic experiencing um it's very powerful work but it, it needs focus and time to be able to to really sit with things 
because the false matrix wants us to be busy, 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 doing, 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 output, output, output. And it's very important that we create that space, create a very spacious life. I live a very spacious life these days. And I deliberately, I don't overpack my diary. I only do one thing every day, like one assignment every day. I don't, I used to pack my diary with meeting after meeting, after commitment meeting. And these days, one, I limit myself to one thing per day in terms of like a Zoom or a, a meeting or an interview like this and try and leave a lot of space for, um, to, to process life, particularly uh, as I'm going back into the false matrix very strongly with, with uh, going into politics. It's, it's yes. um, a very strong journey um, dealing with media and um, some of the attacks that are coming at me for standing in my truth you know you're doing incredible work what an interesting journey to hold your ground you know as you're fully entering the 3d um i had steve, steve noble on a few weeks ago and he had mm. a job for a while as a bus driver and he okay. was talking about how everyone was complaining because the buses were always late and how that was for him you know really entering the 3d and it, it kind of was quite activating so it's it's yeah. an incredible um, journey that you're on. And um, I also feel during these times, it's so important to look after our nervous system. Mm. Because there's a huge acceleration with the solar flares and the turbulent world that we're living in, that this mm. grounding and recalibrating and giving ourselves time is absolutely yeah. key. Well, again, you see on that front, I would say that very definitely this false matrix is constantly creating dissonance i mean just for example i don't often listen to the radio but i've been doing a lot of traveling in my car recently and i thought i'll just tune in like to radio four or radio two or jeremy vine lunchtime show just to see what they're broadcasting and literally there's so much peril underlying all of these stories or whether it's interviews or an interview with, maybe with a woman who's sort of survived some terrorist or been in Palestine or or someone who's got some horrific thing has happened to them or the sub postmasters and what happened to them and this girl being put in Holloway and I could literally feel that my nervous system like oh my god I could feel the activation and we have to be consciously aware that media and a lot of this stuff is is being and, and things like the, the whole of the system, the financial system, keep us keeping us in debt, keeping us work busy, 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 because we've got to keep on top of the money and things like speeding fines and all of these cameras, which are like suddenly spitting. Oh, there's another parking fine or a penalty charge notice. And it's like constant. It's constantly keeping us in predator alert. So it's really important to create safe space, like in your home, in your bedroom particularly, so that you can sleep really deeply and healing and, and to create a safe space, no matter how, even if you only live in a tiny space, that's so important. I've done a lot of um, training in feng shui uh, and the energy of spaces and the importance of safe spaces. So. I do, uh, there's a whole chapter in my book about creating safe space um, and in relationships as well, you know. And within ourself, you know, by working with the inner child, because mm. that's ultimately, there's always going to be stresses on the outside in the world we're living in. So it's how can we return to ourselves and recalibrate and stabilize ourselves? Do you have any, any tips on that, Rachel? If we do yeah. get triggered. Well, this is the thing I quite often find myself having a little conversation with my higher self and my what I call my lower self. So my higher spiritual wise self that is, you know, my I guess my soul. And then I've gotten this frightened, little, you know, like maybe I've gone into some kind of response and or maybe I'm, I'm wanting to fly or I'm getting angry about something and to just have that soothing 
inner conversation between the two halves of yourself, the higher self that knows, sees the bigger picture and sees the, that everything is a gift, everything is ultimately benevolent, just to have a conversation with yourself. I mean, there's some te great techniques about doing that where you can literally put two chairs in front of one another and go from one seat to the other seat, or you can write yourself a letter for you know, journaling exercises where you write a letter and then you respond to it from your higher self. So there's, there's, there's quite a few techniques where you can really uh, hold space for that frightened part of you that is the it, yeah that is the inner child that is back aged I know four or five when everything was overwhelming and you're getting into that space again and for your older self to really parent your younger inner child you know so it's uh, it's uh, ongoing a constant because it's kind of you you never get you never get to completely you it, you, ne you never get to the bottom of it if you know what I mean. Yeah, and and I understand your your book Liberation is a book of two halves that that very much looks at all that fear, struggle, pain, but also looks at what's beyond that, the joy, yeah. the the bliss, the manifestation, the abundance. So it's kind of like a dance in a way, isn't it? It's that do you, do you mm. see it's the acceptance of of both? You know, we're always kind of pointing and having the intention really of setting yeah. towards the light, but then dancing, being able to dance with that darkness. Yeah. So one of the greatest breakthroughs of my life to date was opening to plant medicine. And it was a very strong, my first ceremony was a very strong difficult challenging ceremony but eventually after a huge amount of deep work and purging i burst through the veil and to the, to uh the higher dimension of what lies beyond the false matrix what lies beyond the veil of krishna dancing in this in basically in this higher dimension just like like a million volts of diamond energy of like pure love it's like whoa so I realized through that experience what lies beyond the veil. And I strongly believe that people like us, um, the light workers, the way showers, we are, um, it's our kind of mission to create that heaven on earth. And it's almost like we're thinning the veil and we're creating little torus fields which allow this energy to cascade through so we're kind of creating points of light so that <clears throat> this is the training so that we can can be in the false matrix we can go in deep into the labyrinths like I, last week i went to the houses of parliament for a and that is a that is a metaphysical machine it's an energy machine to lock down power make no mistake when, if you go to the Houses of Parliament, the the number of feng shui metaphysical devices in there, which are you can you you can see them, uh, and you know going into that labyrinth and and not falling into it, being able to walk the labyrinth but still hold that place of light. This to me is the training, <laughs> you know. But it's not we're not always successful, but that that it's about flooding the labyrinth with light, and I I believe that is happening which is why there's so much darkness is showing its face now because literally there's no place for it to hide yeah a bit like when you clear your house out and the spiders you clear all the furniture out and the spiders kind of scuttle out because they've got no place to hide it's kind of like we're clearing out the house and we're shining the light into all those dark corners and it's quite what we're discovering is quite horrific and um so but holding that space of healing because once things come from the darkness into the light they can be transmuted and healed but when they're hiding their their kind of this wetiko this lower dimensional energy it can kind of hide in crevices and it, it can do its kind of work so it's very important for us to bring this to the light you know
and have having compassion for ourselves while we're going through this process because this is happening internally for us as well that the, mm. the darkness within all of us is coming to the surface yeah. how do yeah. you um kind of you know, one of the things that really interests me is that um, making the shift into New Earth, this is New Earth podcast, being an inner shift, you know, it's a change in vibration, we're shifting into love, we're shifting into community, into compassion, all those change, that change in frequency. So it's interesting when you're talking about light workers and things like this, it's easy to kind of put it out there in the sense of, you know, we want to, you know, help the planet. But for me, it always comes through that that journey inward, you know, it's because otherwise we can go into that saviour complex. Yeah. Do you have any comments on that? Well, the first thing I'd say is that it's a restoration. <clears throat> so we're reclaiming what what essentially we've lost. Um, you know, so, so it's we're we're restoring ourselves to our wholeness, to our humanity to sharing, to living in community, to restoring that feeling of being part of a tribe, because th this false matrix has created si a situation where we're all individuals, we all live on in our own little house, doing our own thing, and we, we've lost that art of tribal living. So it's so beautiful when you do shamanic work or going to Peru, and, uh, you know, just being with the people who haven't lost that up in the mountains, the tribes who sing together and dance around the fire and help one another and everyone helps one another and they cook and they cook together and they eat together and they celebrate together and they drum together. So it's a beautiful restoration. And I feel that that is really happening increasingly. So, for example, Whenever I do any kind of gathering, I always like I might go to like a hall that has been booked or something or like the an event at the town hall. They've always arranged the chairs in rows, you know, yes, with the no speaker circles. at the front. <laughs> and so I always rearrange it around a central altar sitting in circles. Beautiful. So just yeah. holding the space and everyone's sitting in circle. Everyone can see one another. And rather than have a speaker, you know, preaching to an audience who just sit obediently listening involve everyone in the discussion and share and do a sharing circle and it's so beautiful and empowering so we are definitely going through a restoration i would say and it's a it's uninstalling all of these programs which have been embedded in us through the education system through marketing through all of the psychological behavioral psychology i mean that's really come to the fore in the past few years about the level of psyops behavioral psychology to force public behavior it's actually quite shocking the levels of brainwashing and manipulation and i think it's um, really difficult for people to step out of that like i'm i'm an international ambassador for the people's health alliance and, okay yeah you know, great. really encouraging people to find their voice and start speaking like i'm actually a really shy person and it's just been doing inner work um moving past these things that i'm actually doing this work so you know we can all do this we can all mm. you know in our own way it doesn't necessarily have to be a podcast we can all find our voice in our own way and in a way that's yeah. what it's all about it's when you said about the circle it's like how can we all contribute in our own way and um, our voice mm. it, to the collective you know it's 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 very beautiful actually yeah, that is one of the be most beautiful things about the past few years is so many people have found their voice <clears throat> and my, as my voice just breaks there, but my, the first video that went viral for me when I was speaking out was called Rachel Speaks Out and then I created a, a fortnightly, it was originally weekly uh, forum called The People Speak Out. We still do it every beautiful. fortnight, I don't host every week, but um, it's just a forum where people can come on and share without judgment, whatever they want to share, they can speak out, they can express frustration, they can express gratitude, whatever. And it's so yeah, this, the thing is, truth has a resonance. As you're saying, everything's vibration. And increasingly, you we can uh, tune in to what, what is truth, and what is 
dissonant, what is chaotic, which what is yes. lies. And it's such an important thing, particularly with media. There's so much faked, faked, you know, um, stories. And, and so that ability to tune in to integrity because truth has a resonance. And as I said, it is truth that will bring the walls of Jericho down. Yes. So I think this, this ability to speak our truth doesn't have to be loud, just from the heart. Yes. Speaking our truth is so important to this process. It's very empowering and liberating because of course the, the throat chakra is the manifestation chakra because we're literally spelling our future into being through the, the sounds and the resonance and the words that we use. So yeah, it's very powerful. And tuning ourselves as well, like we can become the instruments, you know? Yeah. And for the past year, I've been doing morning mantras, actually. I was encouraged by oh, one wow. of our Crestbrook Dale community, uh, Mog, who's a great uh, musician and singer. And she was doing mantras with Lucidia and Raphael every morning on Zoom. They do from 9 to 9.40 a.m. Just on, it, it is on Zoom, which I prefer in person, but sometimes it, you know, it's convenient to be online. And so we just sit and chant along to usually do three mantras and rattle along or drum along, chant along. And it's so beautiful. There's so much power in mantras and frequencies and the mandalas that we create through just singing, whether it's Om Mane Padme Hum or simple kind of mantra songs. It's very powerful music resonance harmony voice sound yeah thank you so much is there any last thoughts that you'd like to share before we finish up today rachel um well i would i would love to give a little bit of a, a plug for uh, the book liberation it's it's um, a limited edition hardback version and i only printed a thousand and eight copies of this uh, launch edition um, and um, a lot of that was downloaded uh, to me. Or the, well, in fact, the whole concept was downloaded to me, and then I later wrote the book. It took me three years to actually write it, but it came through after um, an ayahuasca ceremony in the jungle of Peru in February 2020, where literally I woke up and a whole thought block downloaded with the title and the design and the cover and okay. everything. And I quickly wrote it all down. Um, and then just as I was coming back to the UK, that's when the whole of the lockdowns and the uh, people were wearing masks on the plane. Then suddenly yeah, everything started going into lockdown and this whole COVID thing came through. So I had to, I was actually forced by the universe to live a lot of the content of the book before I finally um, decided to uh, well, I finally thought I've, I had that conversation with my higher self and my just like, you've got to write this. So I basically did uh, put the book on pre-sale, which is a very powerful little technique to do something like a crowdfunding or to actually launch something, even if it's not written yet, to get people to pre-order, because then you've got a whole load of people expecting the finished product. And you better get on with it. <laughs> it helps to block through the procrastination. Amazing. Um yeah, so, um, yeah, so that came out last November and then the whole of um, my, this foray into politics feels very powerful to me of um, vote Rachel Elnor Love. So I'm, I'm standing in as a councillor in the Bakewell by-election next week, actually. Incredible. And also as the new mayor for the East Midlands region and also as MP for Derbyshire Dales. And again... I, I'm not attached to whether I will win those elections, but to me, standing for public office is another vehicle to be able to speak out strongly um, about some of these uh, false matrix traps, which are keeping people trapped in a lot of scarcity and, um, and are causing people pain and suffering. Um, so, yeah, it's very much my mission is to bring conscious awareness to all of those ways where we are being let down by the powers that should be supporting us. And I know that um, uh, there's many uh, 
um, initiatives like the People's Health Alliance and the People's Food and Farming Alliance and all the local community assemblies equally that are co-creating an alternative future reality. So it's, to me, it's a two pronged approach. Let's co-create the, the new. Yes. But let's also keep chipping away and keep shining a light and keep speaking our truth in all those corridors of the old power and system because every time we do we weaken them we weaken them we weaken them and we're already seeing the whole thing is starting to kind of it's already collapsed <laughs> collapse it's, it's collapsing collapsed. the scenery is wobbling as yeah, pam gregory says wobbling. it's like and um you know it's only a matter of time so so it's a two to me it's a two-pronged approach um yeah so it's but it's a very exciting time to be incarnated isn't it it you really know. is it's a very powerful time and and I'm actually excited, you know, the world we're going to be moving into. I, I have a very strong belief that with the astrology indicating it as well, that we are yeah. creating new earth together. Yeah. And so many people are living it in their own little ways. And so <clears throat> it is inspiring when people go and experience those things. Maybe they go on a retreat and they experience eating the most highest vibration, nutritious, delicious vegan food, or just being in uh, sound healing circles or having sound baths or cacao ceremonies. Yeah. Just the, the bliss and the joy of tasting into that, that higher vibration. And then you go back to, I don't know, to your nine to five job and the contrast. You're just like, yeah, I want more of that. Give me more of that. You know, so I think we are bit by bit that times are changing Absolutely. and it's only, yeah, only a matter of time. So I'm going to put all your links in the description. So if anyone wants to get in contact with Rachel, you can um, reach out to her there. Thank you so much, Rachel. This has been mm. so inspiring. Thank you so much. And we wish you all the best with your um, election, standing for mayor and yeah. the things that you're doing. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for inviting me on. Sending so much love. Sending you lots of love. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. Bye for now.